When an anticipated game is released, besides all the excited fans eager to jump in, there is another group of players who know that their enjoyment won't end after the casual experience. With the rise of speedrunning's popularity, many new releases are accompanied by curiosity about how long the game's fastest completion may take. For speedrunners themselves, the release of a new title is a rare opportunity to gather together and after going through the initial stages of regular playthroughs, attempt to break the game down into pieces, discover strategies, glitches and exploits which may be used to save time and reach the final credits faster. While almost all speed games see continuous development of such strategies over time, the brief period after a game's release presents a clean canvas where speedrunners and glitch hunters are free to employ their talents and together paint a picture of a brand new speedrun through their ingenious discoveries. Although competing for the fastest speedrun records can be done at any moment and is often the most visible part of speedrunning, breaking through new time barriers would not be possible without the collaborative work of the entire speedrunning community surrounding a game. With this in mind, it is no surprise that Elden Ring generated the most hype in speedrunning circles that I can remember. Various runners from other From Software games, but also speedrunning veterans from other communities have assembled with the single goal of breaking Elden Ring down to the core. After an initial quieter period when everyone was enjoying their first playthroughs, which took a while given the game's enormous size, what followed was a breathtaking collaborative effort that culminated in the game being beaten in under just 30 minutes only a few weeks after release. While there are surely more discoveries to be unraveled, it is unlikely that what is being utilized now is going away. That is how significant some of these strategies are. In this video, I will go over the first major glitch, how it works, how it was discovered through a precursor, and also cover several other strategies that have been used so far. If glitch speedruns are not your cup of tea, please understand that speedrunning is an umbrella under which everyone is encouraged to do what they find fun. There is no gatekeeping. Instead of thinking about speedrunning as a sport with rigid rules for a competition, it may be better viewed as a sandbox with limitless opportunities where fierce competitors, curious glitch hunters and those who enjoy playing games fast without any glitches are all welcome. Nevertheless, I think the inner mechanics of exploits and the stories behind their discoveries are extremely interesting, even for someone uninterested in glitched runs, for they are a product of an often underrated cooperative effort of all kinds of people ultimately connected by their shared love of a video game, and can reveal at least parts of the game's inner mechanics and by extension, the development process. With that being said, let's get into it. With Elden Ring, there have been two major factors contributing to the game being extremely broken so fast, to the point of cutting the time down of the speedrun to less than half an hour. The first is the aforementioned hype that brought many talented players together under one roof. As I was initially hoping for in my video about the game's speedrunning prospects months ago, the second factor is the existing familiarity with previous From Software titles and an extremely detailed knowledge of their inner mechanics. While it may be difficult to believe, Elden Ring runs on the same internal engine as Demon's Souls released in 2009 on the PlayStation 3. Although heavily modified, of course, the core shares similarities. This means that prior knowledge acquired from Demon's Souls, Dark Souls 1 and 3, and even Bloodborne could be utilized when trying to break and route the new release. This linkage is best demonstrated by the wide use of the so-called death cam skips in Dark Souls 1, although they were originally discovered in Bloodborne. All of the aforementioned games have had active speedrunning communities, which have picked them apart to a remarkable degree. Many knowledgeable people jointly working on a new project must inevitably lead to results, and to results it led. The first major glitch discovery took only a day or two after the glitch hunting process had begun. No matter what size the game is and how many areas there are to progress through between the beginning and the end, there will inevitably be certain conditions under which the game can be finished and the credits reached. Wrong Warp is a type of glitch that often allows the middle part of a game to be completely omitted. In essence, Wrong Warping refers to manipulating the location the player is being transported to and changing it for another. If the newly selected location can be a late game area, you have a recipe for cutting down not just minutes, but often hours from a speedrun. It is precisely a glitch of this kind that allowed Ocarina of Time to be beaten in under 20 minutes for the first time many years ago. But more importantly, it is also the technique with which Dark Souls 1 is finished in roughly the same time. The original method of wrong warping, called Force Quit Wrong Warp, was discovered in Dark Souls 1 a mere month after the game's release. 
It is therefore no surprise that given the shared engine, the technique would be among the first tested in Elden Ring, which is exactly what the Japanese runner Alta 4 did. His name is a perfect fit, because Rome Warping with this method involves force closing the game through the Alt F4 shortcut in the last few frames of a loading screen, following a regular warp. When the player is spawned in an area after a load screen, the game needs 5 frames in order to properly save their coordinates. This is because there is a 4 frame buffer for the character's position, which means that the stored position is effectively always slightly delayed behind the real position, as long as the character is in motion. However, because this 5 frame process is interrupted by force closing the game, upon reloading the save file, the game knows which area to put the player to, but without any store coordinates fails to set a flag telling it that the player has spawned improperly. The absence of this flag activates a failsafe routine, placing the player to the last area where they had a properly stored position, but at a so-called default position spawn point of that area, which is relatively arbitrarily set by the developers. Some of them are very close to the bonfire and do not provide any potential for exploitation, but some of them can be placed in very advantageous places. The place where the various default positions are set will largely determine how much time can be saved utilizing such a glitch. It is one thing to make a new discovery, but it is an entirely different endeavor to make it useful in a speedrun. Yet, even for my first casual playthrough, I had a hunch that certain areas could present a perfect opportunity for massive sequence breaks if wrong warping was found. There are zones to which one can get transported fairly early into the game, but which are supposed to serve as small previews of locations accessible later on. Naturally, putting a failsafe location into a closed off space would make little sense, so they are situated in the normally playable parts of the areas. Wrong warping to these default positions therefore allows for these particular zones to be accessed very early, even without meeting the proper conditions. The speedrun's most important wrong warp took place in Farum Azula, where a teleporter at the full belfries in Liurnia was entered. The teleporter leads to a closed off location in Azula, containing some minor loot, but one which is part of the regular Farum Azula map. If one hopes to enter Azula proper, they must make it all the way past the fire giant of the snowy mountaintops of giants, which can take up to several hours. Going directly from the second area of the game to virtually the last is obviously massive and something which those hoping to finish the game as fast as possible will want to perform. Upon entering the preview part of the zone, Alte 4 used the memory of Grace to get warps to his last Grace, making sure to interrupt the process during the loading screen. Upon reloading the game, he found himself in the default position of Farum Azula, which is at the regular entrance, allowing him to proceed towards the late game bosses. However, force closing the game during a speedrun is considered a pretty grey area because it is technically a functionality outside of the game. Additionally, it is also fairly intrusive to the gameplay and when done in specific scenarios may even be used to prevent the game from creating a new save state. This could lead to effectively undoing one's mistakes without losing any time by simply closing the game before the game state is updated after a mistake was made. Therefore, the original idea was to treat Force Quit similarly to Dark Souls 1, where it is only allowed in specific speedrunning categories, but is banned by default. The regular any percent category for Elden Ring thus was back to square one. As a sign of how broken Elden Ring would be, it didn't take long and basically just tens of hours later, a new and fully in-game performed wrong warp technique was discovered. The Unstable Ground Wrong Warp The Unstable Ground Wrong Warp is yet another way of wrong warping that finds its roots in Dark Souls 1 and is fundamentally similar to the Force Grid method but performed fully in-game. To understand how it works, we first need to consider the concepts of stable and unstable ground. Stability is a property of any given piece of ground and determines whether the game stores or does not store one's position while located on that particular plane. Most ground will be considered stable, and the player's position will be saved. However, for example, moving terrain such as elevators hold the unstable property, because the last position stored on them would be static, while the platform itself is moving, creating massive gameplay problems. There are also other locations that may have the unstable property for various other reasons and which may be less obvious than the aforementioned elevator. For example, the surroundings of these statues are also unstable. As you can see, reloading the save file when standing right next to them puts the player further away. In Elden Ring, there are also specific sites of grace that if warped to, the player will stand up on a piece of unstable ground after loading in. This causes a disconnect where the character is in a new area after a load screen, but without any stored coordinates. As such, reloading the save file in this scenario results in the player spawning in the first area they warped from, 
but in the default position as the game has no information stored concerning the coordinates, exactly as when force closing at the end of a loading screen. The unstable ground method was as groundbreaking as the force quit one, albeit carried the limitation of needing to gain access to your grace with an unstable warping point. Once this grace was lit, however, it could have been used at any point to perform the same skips which the community came up with before. It surely seemed like any percent as a category was being killed very quickly, but the speedrunners were far from finished. The Unstable Ground Wrong Warp is not the last discovered Wrong Warp variant. Yes, shortly thereafter, a third technique was invented, tracing its origins yet again to Dark Souls 1. Obviously, as a Dark Souls 1 speedrunner, this warms my heart and also allows me to explain these mechanics for you in great detail. In DS1, a 2017 finding showed that by overlapping two warps at the same time, a wrong warp could be performed. This was achieved through a frame-perfect glitch where the Purple Cow's Crystal, an item that takes the player to the PvP arena in the DLC, was activated, followed by using the Dark Sign to return to the last bonfire. The simultaneous warps resulted in warping the player to the area determined by the second warp triggered by the dark sign, that is the last bonfire's area, but the game losing track of which coordinates to spawn the player to in the process, instead making it fall back to the first spawn point on the area's list, the default position instead. While in Elden Ring, this exact mechanic works as well, but overlapping two interfering warps is way simpler than any frame-perfect shenanigans. The item Memory of Grace is Elden Ring's alternative to the Dark Sign. It deprives the player of all their runes and transports them to the last site of grace they rested at. This is used as the first warp. Due to the game's fast travel system being accessible at any point with few exceptions, it is possible to activate another warp to a different grace through the map, including while being warped by the memory item. With proper and fairly lenient timing, a second warp is triggered, determining the new area the player will load in but because of the first warp causing the game to lose track of appropriate coordinates, the player will be placed at the default position once again. Saying this is massive would be an understatement. Not only can the wrong warp be performed anywhere as long as two different sites of grace are available, the runner can actively choose the target area without it being the area of their last stored position. But wait, there's more! The ultimate play is combining the map and unstable ground wrong warps, allowing to trigger the glitch within an area the player is currently located, without the need of warping to it specifically. That means even zones without any sites of grace can be wrong warped in, without needing an unstable ground grace elsewhere. Let's say we want to wrong warp immediately after being transferred to Far Missoula. The way we can do this is by performing a wrong warp to the Stormhill Shack grace, where the default position is located under the map, simply resulting in a fall. While falling, there is obviously no stable area to stand on, so a save and quit results in the player being transferred to their previous area with the stored position, but to the default position, exactly as with the unstable wrong warp. The combination of two wrong warps is the fundamental glitch of the any percent category speedrun, and the primary reason of why Elden Ring can be already beaten under 30 minutes, and will inevitably go much lower. It is puzzling how From Software managed to mess up default positions of so many zones, especially in the second half of the game. They could be the result of redesigning areas during development or cut content. But I simply think the sheer size of Elden Ring and its world resulted in sloppiness. With many of the intended areas being skipped in this manner comes one giant downside however, which is losing out on all the character progression that makes the late game bosses beatable, whether those are levels or upgrade materials. The speedrun is therefore needed to discover the most easily obtainable tools which could still deal enough damage in late game areas. The first item with immense power was the Ice Rind Hatchet, an axe carrying the Horfrost Stomp skill. This skill is outright broken, and not because of some crazy exploit, but because the developer simply made it so. It has a wide reach, fast cast times, low FP cost, absurd damage scaling with intelligence and dexterity, and triggers Frostbite as well. Importantly, the Hatchet is upgraded via the Somber Smithing Stone Path, which is maxed out at plus 10, meaning that much fewer upgrade materials need to be collected than with the regular upgrade route. Thanks to this weapon, the late game areas are quickly clearable even without much other character progression, especially when combined with another broken mechanic, the Royal Knight's Resolve glitch. Royal Knight's Resolve is an Ash of War skill applicable to any melee weapon and increases the damage of the weapon's next attack by 80%, fading immediately after the blow or if an attack is not performed within the next 10 seconds or so. 
there is a way to exploit this skill and not only transfer it to attacks of a different weapon, but make it not disappear with an attack, effectively giving the 80% damage boost for the full duration of 10 seconds. Performing this is very simple. The weapon with the skill is equipped in the left hand, the skill is cast, and the weapon is unto-handed. Now, the buff will affect even the weapon carried in the right hand, and as long as the original weapon is not unequipped, or an attack with it is not performed, the buff will stay active for the next 10 seconds. Given that Horfrost Stomp is a skill cast with the weapon in the right hand, it benefits from the RKR glitch to the fullest extent, making a broken skill even more broken. Just take a look at the damage difference on this bear. As if that wasn't enough, casting the buff with a weapon for which we have insufficient stats still applies it, and at the cost of 0 FP. This is almost too good to be true. So these are the three main ingredients that will most likely define Elden Ring any percent for some time. The Wrong Warp glitch, allowing for most mandatory areas to be skipped, the Horfrost Stomp, and the Royal Knight's Resolve glitch, which in combination produce extreme damage output. As of this moment, the released 1.03 patch nerfed the Stomp and fixed the RKR glitch, but in these scenarios speedrunners generally simply keep on playing on the fastest version of the game, and even if they did not, they would find the next most viable strategy to accomplish their goals. It is definitely possible that in the future, once the updates for the game have stabilized, there will be a separate current patch category, given three conditions. Current patch is not the fastest way to complete the game. If it was, there would be no reason for a separate category. The playstyle and strategies of the run substantially change, warranting an extra category. And of course, there are people who want to compete with each other on the current patch version. As I said at the beginning of the video, leaderboards are just one aspect of speedrunning, and anyone is free to do whatever they may find fun, whether that is running on old patch, current patch, with or without wrong warps. For me personally, I have finally finished my casual playthrough and dove into Elden Ring speedrunning, starting with the All Remembrances category. The exhilaration of working with other people to develop new strategies and glitches and create different routes based on them is perhaps the best part about speedrunning for me. With Dark Souls having new major discoveries even a decade after its release, I have no doubt that Elden Ring will end up being just as fruitful, if not more. After all, everything I covered here today is still very much only the game's infancy, and new breakthroughs are occurring almost every day. Rest assured that once new glitches are discovered and routes are put together, I will be here to tell you about them, whether through my typical glitch explanation videos, on my speedrun explain series, as I plan on doing many Elden Ring speedruns on my Twitch stream and competing for upcoming world records. So don't forget to subscribe here and follow me on Twitch if you want to stay up to date. Thank you Miyazaki for this amazing game and thank you for watching. Have a great day.